Hello, my name is Alex Wilson, and today we'll be discussing a little bit about egg drop syndrome virus. As the name implies, egg drop syndrome virus is a virus that affects avian species and was originally discovered in 1976, which coincidentally led to people referring to the virus as egg drop syndrome 76. Now, I take an interest in this topic because even before I started studying to be a veterinary technician as I am now, uh, I volunteered a lot in rehabilitation centers with birds and became increasingly interested in why they were being brought in, not just for physical trauma, but also for uh, disease and viral ailments. So going a little bit more in depth about egg drop syndrome, we will be looking at things such as its pathology, its epidemiology, the symptoms associated with egg drop syndrome, as well as any treatment or prevention options available. So let's get a little, little well, more well acquainted with egg drop syndrome virus. Now, egg drop syndrome is caused by a duck atadenovirus, which causes a major drop in egg rate production laying, as well as the laying of soft, thin, and shellless eggs. More specifically though, egg drop syndrome is an avian adenovirus, which according to the Pakistani Veterinary Journal, is a non-enveloped DNA virus that is relatively resistant to heat and pH changes. This means that once the virus enters the body, it is increasingly difficult for the body to remove that virus. Now, it affects domesticated ducks and geese primarily, although it is transmissible to other birds, such as uh, turkeys, quail, and chickens. Now, fortunately, egg drop syndrome virus doesn't occur in the US very often, although there are several instances that have been recorded. Its primary areas of occurrence, though, are in places such as Africa, China, Pakistan, and most notably India. I say most notably India because back in 1984, in the Namakal district of India, while a full number of poultry affected was never known or recorded, egg drop syndrome swept through the district and affected the egg rate production of every bird in the district that was affectable by it which crippled many poultry farmers in the district beyond recovery. This is why it's incredibly important to go over egg drop syndrome virus as thoroughly as we would any of our local diseases or virus, because in the instance of an outbreak or trying to prevent one, you need to know how to do those things. Which brings us to talking about the symptoms of egg drop syndrome. Now the main effect that egg drop syndrome virus has on birds affected with it is that of laying of soft, thin, and shellless eggs, as well as a major decrease in egg production rate. Now there is detection with a real-time fluorescence loop-mediated isothermal amplification assay. However, since egg drop syndrome virus really doesn't occur in the states too often, most people rely on simple clinical signs to detect the virus. Um, in some instances, poultry producers reported that some of their birds, just before the change in egg production, uh, were experiencing signs of inappetence and transient diarrhea. However, most people don't notice any issue with their birds until they see a loss of egg pigmentation, and that quickly moves to the laying of soft, thin, and shellless eggs. Um, some eggs are also known to come out rough or chalky. Uh, and another thing is that while the chicks developing inside the deformed eggs aren't necessarily more likely to die within them, uh, in some instances, after hatching, poultry producers recorded that these chicks experienced a higher mortality rate within the first week of life. Now, another clinical sign present in geese and ducks that is not present in chickens and turkey is that of respiratory issues such as sneezing and coughing. This is likely due to the longer necks of geese and ducks as opposed to chickens, turkey, and quail and egg drop syndrome virus has an effect on the respiratory system that it doesn't have on the other birds. However, perhaps the most unfortunate reality is that egg drop syndrome virus tends to go unnoticed because the birds uh, seem perfectly healthy for the most part, and no one notices an issue until uh, they start laying the bad eggs. This makes identifying the birds with the virus and isolating them for treatment extremely difficult. Uh, but that also brings us to an unfortunate reality of egg drop syndrome virus, and that is that egg drop syndrome virus is an untreatable disease, or virus. That egg drop syndrome virus is an untreatable virus, and what's more, it has produced several strains already. Now, that does not mean there are not prevention options available. Back in 2012, 
uh, some scientists were able to create a vaccine for egg drop syndrome. So now, uh, vaccination with the inactivated vaccine before the time of laying is the only vaccine-approved method of prevention. However, once again, since egg drop syndrome really doesn't occur in the U.S. very often, most people rely on simply creating an egg drop syndrome-free zone. And some of the best ways to do that are some of the most simple. Uh, good biosecurity, disinfecting plastic egg trays before they're used, uh, chlorinating water before it's used is another great way to prevent the spread. But perhaps the most important of them is uh, making sure your chicken flocks don't come into contact with any other bird species, especially ducks, as they are the primary carriers and transmitters. Now, it's important to limit the spread of egg drop syndrome virus, not just for the bird's sake, but also for the poultry farmer, because egg drop syndrome virus can be a huge economic burden on a poultry farmer. Now, as stated before, egg drop syndrome's primary effect is that it causes a decrease in the egg rate production as well as the laying of soft, thin, and shellless eggs. Now, the rate at which an egg production can decrease can vary wildly from anywhere from 10% to 40%. So, while a farmer is able to sell some of the bad deformed eggs, they're selling them at a lower price. What's more, if they're getting those eggs from the same bird, they're going to be selling fewer of them meaning that a worst case scenario is that the virus spreads to multiple hens and you're selling cheaper eggs and fewer of them. Meaning that by the time the virus finally runs its course through the entire flock, the poultry farmer could be crippled financially beyond recovery before the virus is through. This is why it's incredibly important to practice the proper prevention methods in order to make sure egg drop syndrome virus doesn't spread through the entire flock. So over the last few minutes, we have discussed some things about egg drop syndrome virus. We have talked about how it causes a major issue in egg formation. We've discussed how domestic poultry are the most at risk. We've talked about the symptoms associated with the virus, while also going over uh, that egg drop syndrome has no treatment options, only prevention methods. We've also discussed how egg drop syndrome virus can be a huge financial burden on anyone with a poultry crop. Once again, we can be thankful that egg drop syndrome virus doesn't occur in the U.S. very often. However, this does not mean we can ignore it, especially since back in 2010, while it seems like a long time ago, it's still fairly recent, uh, in the southeast area of China, uh, a new strain of egg drop syndrome virus showed up, which affected the egg production rate of over 4 million ducks. That is a huge number of anything to be affected, let alone a finance-producing crop animal. And this is why it's important to practice the proper prevention methods to make sure that egg drop syndrome virus never reaches our shores in such force. I thank you for taking this time to listen to me. Uh, hopefully I didn't ramble on too long. And these here are my sources for everything. All right, have a good day.